Steady now. One of the more divisive trends in gaming during the late 2000s was reboot culture, something we're still seeing the effects of to this day. It's a risky gambit. Sometimes, a restart can provide a new beginning for the likes of Tomb Raider, while other series resets fall flat on their face. Propaganda's take on Torok would sadly fall into the latter category a largely forgettable first-person shooter that sheds the strengths of the previous games for the gritty reboot treatment. Sadly, it sinks thanks to a lack of personality, weak shooting that swings between dull and clunky, and a series of poor design decisions that turn heated battles into an exercise in frustration. Corporal Joseph Torok is a space marine assigned to Whiskey Company after going AWOL on the Wolfpack, a former Black Ops group whose leader Kane traded military ops for war crimes. After tracking the criminal to an outworld planet, the ship is shot down and leaves the marines stranded on a jungle surface rife with prehistoric life and dangerous soldiers who shoot on sight. Torok must work with his comrades to execute their mission and escape but it's easier said than done when many of his group distrust him because of how he left Wolfpack. Unfortunately, the paper-thin characterization and lackluster writing leave the story feeling hollow and cliched, with dialogue you can see coming a mile off. It doesn't help that the lead, a supposed warrior with Native American heritage, shows a stone-faced personality that is less endearing and more uninteresting. The lone bright spot is Ron Perlman chewing up the scenery as a particularly vindictive marine opposite Torok, but sadly, it's not enough. You okay? I'll live. Torok ticks a lot of the 7th gen shooter boxes albeit half-heartedly. Spread across over a dozen chapters, levels are pretty spacious and sometimes allow for a stealthy approach, with enemies in an undetected state. A lot of the action, despite featuring dinosaurs, is middling and lacks a distinctive locale, gunfight or standout story moment. The only real instances of ingenuity come when both humans and dinosaurs are on the same battlefield allowing you to set up a mauling using the shotgun's flare. It can be fun to play the sides against each other and watch the carnage unfold, though these moments feel too fleeting. A lot of the time, you're shoved down straightforward paths while blandly killing everything in sight. It feels like a retread of shooters from before, despite its relatively early release in the generation. It goes from generic to frustrating in a hiccup though, with some odd decisions which leave combat sometimes very difficult. The shooting feels slightly off, almost too zoomed in to offer a good view of your surroundings. While standard skirmishes can be beaten, wider battles can leave you stuck as to who is even shooting you. This isn't helped by the screen turning dark red when you take damage and blurring like someone vomited Vaseline onto your screen and Turok's general fragility sees him dying in a snap. This is exacerbated by a lousy checkpointing system, often seeing you repeating 20 minutes of gameplay at a time, which feels like a ghostly reminder of older gen shooters, which hadn't figured out how to space gameplay out more suitably for consoles without quick saving. The frustration apex is reached with the bosses, a crummy handful of fights that feel clumsy and overly difficult. Two encounters with a giant T-Rex see you eaten if you get knocked down too much, but a lack of a sprint makes it a nightmarish encounter, and a fight with an underground sea creature isn't much better. It leaves a sour taste in the mouth. Cole wants me to walk you through some of the gear we'll be using once we get to planet side. 
used one of these? Once or twice. A lot was made about Turok's weaponry, and not in a positive light. Missing several iconic staples of the series, including the gruesome Cerebral War, many were left underwhelmed to see these missing. But arguably more damning is that what weapons are present are hugely mixed in quality. Some weapons hit the spot, such as the bow which comes with explosive arrows that turn dinosaurs into giblets, though not humans for some reason, and the knife which allows you to execute gruesome kills both in and out of stealth. On the other hand, the weak shotgun may be one of gaming's worst, the minigun feels woefully underpowered, and the pulse cannon feels like you are shooting drops of water rather than deadly laser shots. An FPS is only as good as its guns, and sadly, propaganda games failed here on most accounts. Turok is sadly one of many Unreal Engine PS3 titles which suffers from a myriad of issues and which show the importance of optimization. The dull colour palette and flat lighting certainly aren't attractive, and it's compounded by textures frequently popping in and severe slowdown in some spots, particularly during the opening escape from the shuttle. Characters look rough around the edges, and not in a good way though cutscene animation is quite decent in comparison. Dinosaurs look the part at least, while the myriad of clone soldiers who lack any visual damage when shot, and emit sparks when stealth killed for some reason, don't do the job. It's just not very attractive, outside of some locations which catch the light nicely. Sadly for Turok fans, this reboot would do little to stoke the flames for a series revival. Despite selling well, servers for the PlayStation 3 version would shut just three years after, rendering most of the game's content, including cooperative and multiplayer modes, inaccessible, and a planned sequel was canned after propaganda was forced to lay off staff in 2009. Torox reboot proves a valuable case study on how not to resurrect a series. It strips most of what made the N64 classics great, while replacing it with half-hearted attempts to keep current with other FPSs. But next to the likes of Modern Warfare, it felt prehistoric. With weak weaponry, generic storytelling, and underwhelming gameplay that swings between uninspired and frustrating, it's no wonder this shooter faded from public consciousness. Unless you're a dedicated dinosaur hunter, this one is best left in the Stone Age. Now I want you to meet Turok. Turok? <laughs> Turok's here to help us track Kane down. He's a former member of Wolfpack. Yeah, before he screwed him over. Slade, can it? He can't be trusted. 